Blair has proclaimed a new dawn for Britain after his party inflicted the most devastating rout on a government in living memory. Labour is set to command a majority of 180. For the Tories, it was a catastrophe which exceeded the most despairing prediction, with half a dozen cabinet ministers suffering humiliating defeats. The Liberal Democrats, like... Those are for the Millbank people. When they arrive, make sure they get one of these to wave. Put the ugly ones at the back. Photogenic children at the front. Hiya. I thought you were more flowers. <laughs> She's in her room. Okay. What have you done? Hang on. You can take these. <laughs> Although Rokel is ultra safe Tory seat, I always had a feeling I could win. Because I think this country is desperate for a change. You know, a new beginning. I really believe today marks a turning point. Okay. No, no, that's fine. Well, call me back if you need any caps. To the Honourable Margaret Dunn with love, the roof avenged. What does that mean? They're from Paul. Maggie, come on. I'll call them back, Dad. I need to find somewhere to live. Maggie Dunn. T-shirts. T-shirts. Cheers. Cheers. There we are. Abby, come here. Come to the front here. Can make a little bit different? Hey, Cole. How are you doing? Thank you. Tony will be here in about ten minutes. Thank you. There you go. Come on, Miss Olga. All your friends at school are going to see you. Now, big wave, smile, you're going to be on TV. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. They, they watch on the lunchtime news. Oh, that's fine. Okay, yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah, we're in the uh, we're in the two seconds. Isn't she wonderful? Look at the people who turned out to welcome me. 
This country is tired of sleaze and dirty politics. What you see is what you're going to get. We campaigned as New Labour and we will govern as New Labour. For 18 years, 18 long years, my party has been in opposition. It could only say it could not do. Today, we are charged with the deep responsibility of government. Today, enough of talking. It is time now to do. Thank you. <laughs> That's so fantastic. <laughs> we have a problem. OK. We have 380 MPs so far, some of whom we know big shit about. I've right. got to go downstairs and eat quiche. Get yourself a sandwich. These are the local party officials. Find out who's got themselves elected in our name. See if you can sniff out the troublemakers. Right. The children will rush around once they get inside and say, which room do we have, and discover that there are barely enough rooms for needs to have one. But they stand now posing for the photographers. They've been kept out of the limelight, the children. This is just for our files. Yeah, anything you've got that might help us to understand her needs. Yes, of course we're going to talk to her, but you can imagine how um, busy she is at the moment. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. This is our manifesto. I couldn't wait for you to win. I can't imagine what the last couple of years have been like in this place. If you have anything I can help you with. I'm, I'm just getting to know some of our new MPs. We'll trade you two of these for one of your filing cabinets. No. to hang your sword. What do I do now? You need to get a locker key. Bother if I was you. That seat's only on loan. We'll have it back at the next election. You know, she claimed benefit from several different addresses. Is that common knowledge? I have my sources. Some people around here think she's Mother Bloody Teresa. Well, I know better. What do you know? I know she had to leave school because she was pregnant. Then she gave the baby away. It's all in there. Mick gave 14 years loyal service to this constituency. Then, just when we had a chance of winning, he's thrown on the rubbish dump. I thought he stood down. He was forced to stand down because he wanted an all-woman shortlist. How can you stay on as her agent if you can't stand her? I'm third generation in my family working for Labour. I made this constituency what it is. 
No mouthy slut is gonna drive me out now. Welcome. We were worried we might not be able to find anywhere big enough to squeeze you all in. <laughs> so, well done. You're over the first hurdle. You've been elected, many of you with big majorities. But don't get carried away. It's now the real battle begins. <laughs> A second term. One term is no good to us. History is littered with Labour governments that failed to achieve a second term. Your campaigns for re-election start today. So, we're going to be focusing on compiling databases. What do you happen to that bit that comes in between, the running the country bit? Most of all, hitting those phones. What's the one thing you need if you're going to run the country? Psychiatrist? No, oh, an office. But those old Tory farts are in a state of denial. They refuse to believe they've lost, so they won't move out of their offices. Sounds like a boys' public school. I mean, everything is based on seniority. Like, if one MP signs on at 9am and the other at, like, three minutes past, the first one's senior and gets first crack at office space. Well, what time did you sign in, Maggie? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how it is to be a Blair babe. <laughs> Thanks. Mm. Oh my god, what's that? <laughs> Poker and toffee. Oh. Girl in this club the other night. Isn't it great? Wait till you've had several. <laughs> <laughs> How's Lindsay? She's been inspired to go back to nursing. Did you find a bed for Mrs. Garrity? No, but she's fine. Okay, Mrs. Garrity, how long have you been waiting? Ages. It's so wet. Yeah, I can see. I'm sorry. Let's get this sorted for you. All right, I'm going to get you a fresh pillow. I'll be back in a moment. Okay. Did you know? MP is most likely to be difficult. In your one-page summary on the cover of each file. What's the problem? But we'll be number ten already. No, no, no. It's uh, it's amazing to be here. I just feel a bit um, grubby. Rooting through people's dirty washing. I'm. I'm proud of our programme and I'd like to be part of putting it into effect. Okay. I'll think about it. Meanwhile, you can help me put this into effect. Our first opening of Parliament. <coughs> the Queen in her coach. Meanwhile, Tony, man of the people, walks to Parliament. Cameras catching the old versus the new. Everybody saw you on television the other day. Welcome to the look back. There's something to tell your kids. So, uh, do you work with the Prime Minister? Um, well, same building. What was the first couple of days, then? I don't know. Hard. Tony Blair with his wife Cherie demonstrating that campaigning skills learnt in opposition can give a fresh look to government. Mr Blair wants to project a mood of excitement and change, of being in touch with public opinion. Oh my God. 
This is my first time under a Labour government. I should hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey run the country, is it? This is my office. Mm-hmm. That must be nice, having an office. So. So, what do you think of the Queen's speech? Why did you write it? So, I got a message. Andy said you wanted to see me. Yeah, the, um, the Times wanted to do a piece. A couple of photographs. Well, why didn't they contact me direct? We took the idea to them. The modern face of New Labour and the uh, real person behind the candidate. So what, they want to photograph me in my kitchen? That sort of thing, yeah, shopping and... Uh, do, they, do they have a, a decent hairdresser in Roka? Yes, Paul, people have their hair cut there. Well, maybe they could shoot you having a makeover. <laughs> ah, Penny Hurst. Very important civil servant, Maggie Dunn. MP for Roka. Hi. Had a bet you'd take that seat. I won ten pounds. Glad to hear it. What exactly is wrong with the way I look? Nothing. This is not about the way you look. You look great, really. This is, it's about how we present you, how we present the party, and, you know, some new clothes or some highlights. Or... <laughs> what this is saying is that we're different. And uh, we're in touch, and new voters can connect with you, and new Labour is out there, and it's cool, and blah, blah, blah. Was this Harvey's idea? Well, I sort of evolved out of a brainstorming session. You were my idea. Why? Because you're perfect. Not just because you want to play queenmaker? No. Well, no, of course not. I suppose... I suppose I want them to notice you. Well, that's okay then. Maggie. Meant to see. Congratulations. Thank you. He is such a tosser. Why doesn't he ring a wren? She doesn't want to be messing around with a married man. He's married to Gordon Brown. So, if I agree to this makeover, what do I get in return? Shine, yeah. Rob, you don't have a view of the river. I'll grab this desk, but if you have a preference. No, no. Having an office is enough for me. <laughs> Swimming with the whales, hunting with the sharks. Did Milbank send you this crap? Uh, I was a last minute candidate. I actually found it quite helpful. I didn't get sent anything. I was obviously seen as a complete lame dark. Hello? It's for you. Hello? I'm calling from the Evening Standard Diary. We saw pictures of you having your hair done. We were wondering who asked you to cut your hair. Why? We understand all the blur babies are getting these bobs. In the first place, it's not remotely a bob, and no one tells me how to cut my hair. There's no party line on it. Gordon Brown says his political passion is creating a new investment culture, equipping Britain for the future. 
to introduce Labour's first budget for 18 years, he was equipped with a gleaming new budget box made by apprentices from the Royal Dockyard at Rosyth, who joined him in Downing Street. Are you back up north again? Mm. When you come to work again? I might. Is there room in your mansion? Hey. Peter. It's Paul. Uh, you weren't here last night, so Tim used your room. Hope you don't mind. Where are you going? going out to celebrate the budget with the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Oh, that sounds like a fun evening. Richard begged you on bended knee. Richard! Uh, it's in the Swiss Hotel overlooking Hyde Park. Lobster and champagne. Gordon's more a raw steak and whiskey man. I have newt and toe of frog. Don't get burnt on the cauldron. You do not wear fuck me shoes if you're going dancing around a cauldron, Paul. But it was a triumph, louder than that. Remind me, was this the same Richard that dumped you? Paul. He did not dump me. What? What? Nice view. You look great. I'm glad you could come. Never did get to celebrate election night. I celebrated. Do you want to come and meet everybody? So, is this an apology? You don't have to, I'm just interested. I was upset. What happened between us? I've been thinking about you. And I was hoping we could put the past few weeks behind us. There have been lots of times when I wanted to ring you. I just thought we should give it a little time. He looks more relaxed. Has he changed? What do you think? He gets so little sleep, he's almost always in a bad mood. Comes into meetings looking like shit and then complains that everybody's not doing their job properly. I get up at 5.45 every morning just to be moaned at. Half a century in which the state has paid the tuition fees for everyone who got a place at university is to come to an end. The move is one of the recommendations of a wide-ranging review of higher education by the government's advisor, Sir Ron Deering. In place of free tuition, there'll be a new system of loans for all but students from the poorest families. The Education Secretary, David Blunkett, said the alternative was a financial crisis in the universities, and the universities themselves called it a necessary step. Hello, how are you? Uh, Penny. Yeah? Sorry, do you mind? Thanks. Is that really necessary? Okay, <clears throat> let's go through Haig's likely reactions for. He'll say, We promised not to introduce tuition fees and now we're doing it. 
Tony's line is what we actually promised to do was abide by the recommendations of the Deering report, and that is what we're doing. He'll say the poorest families will be hardest hit, and their children will be priced out of university education. Poorest families will be exempt. Not really. Most of the country sees Haig as a schoolboy. Tony should just tell him to grow up. If we use the report as our defence, he'll hit us with maintenance grants. Deering says they should be protected, but we're abolishing them. All right, these are the facts. Three times as many kids now spend three years propping up the union bar. They don't even go on demos anymore. If they get a degree, they earn several hundred thousand pounds more than their fellow citizens over their lifetime. Anyway, this works in America. Get the bosses off their backsides into jobs at the weekends and holidays. He'll say that uh, virtually every member of the new Labour cabinet benefited from a free university education. So why are we denying it to our children? So hang on, who's going to pay now? Parents. They're rich enough. Well, there'll be loads, and they can work the same on the holidays. Cheers. I thought holidays were for writing essays and catching up on reading. Oh, which one of us ever did that? Hmm? The rest of my case. No, there's still tuition fees. This is means testing of low middle income parents. It's not means testing because there's a cutoff point. Yeah, that's means testing. Three times the number of students are going into higher education and we can't afford it. I couldn't have gone to university if my dad had to pay. Imagine having to go begging your parents for money. Nightmare. Total nightmare. Man would have wanted to know where every penny went. Would have wanted receipts. I'm shocked. Really shocked. I mean, Blanket's blind. He knows how hard life is. How could he pull up the ladder like this? He's a politician. I'm a politician, Andy. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. <laughs> Look, it works in America. Oh, well, no more argument, then. Uh, while everyone's here, I've got an announcement to make. Getting married? Richard and I are going to buy a house together. You, you get a room with a basin now. <laughs> Tuition fees. Uh, it's supposed to be non-controversial. It's um, long-term care for the elderly. And you want the help of a master wordsmith? <laughs> oh yeah, it's a choker in roker when you run out of roper. <laughs> well, if you're going to be like that. It's tradition that I um, say something complimentary about my predecessor. Mm, so you want to praise and bury in one sentence? Yes, please. I am pleased to have the opportunity to make my maiden speech in a debate on a subject on which I feel strongly and which directly affects many people in my constituency. Long-term care for the elderly. It is my honour to represent Roker and I should like to take this opportunity to describe my constituency. Roker is a magnificent market town. It is also my hometown. We have one of the biggest Anglo-Saxon burial chambers in the country, although it is no longer in use. <laughs> Before making this speech, I should like to refer to my predecessor, Frank Drake. I owe him a debt of gratitude for his considerable contribution to the success of my campaign and for the fact that he enabled me to become the first Labour member for Roker.
Interesting. We were just talking about the single parent benefit protest. Would you like to sign? Because it is prudent economics to reduce the welfare bill, this is a decision that had to be made. Yes, but why didn't the government consult us before deciding whether to make this decision? We've had no voice in the process. Why is the Treasury making that choice for us? It's not just a Treasury decision. Let me tell you the choice we had. Either to make under-25s homeless or reduce this extra benefit to single mothers. And can I just say, we have to behave like a government now. We aren't in opposition. Tony cannot be seen to step back from this. He would be seen as vacillating and aimless. And we've been through that with John Major. This measure is just a beginning. The bigger picture is to get people back to work. And we expect your support. Single parents who go on the dole after next April will get six pounds a week less. So if a single parent comes off benefits to do a job and it doesn't work out and she has to go back on benefits, she's going to be worse off. That is a disincentive to going out and getting work. Well, have I got my sums wrong? If we create a million new jobs, they can bloody well get off their backsides and take them and they can make them work out. It's your job to sell the government's case to your constituents. You were elected on the basis that new Labour was going to be different. And this is the proof. Benefit fraud costs this country nearly £7 billion a year. As a woman, I don't see why I should pay to support someone else's baby. <laughs> Having said that, in an ideal world, we would not want to do this. But we have to stick to Tory spending limits for the first two years. What are the savings? It's about 60 million. I'm sorry, what is that as a percentage of the overall welfare budget? I'm not sure. It's approximately 0.001%. <laughs> Paul, morning, morning, Penny. I need you to write an article for Tony on single parent benefit. Now, it's better for society if children are raised by two parents. Single parents get the same benefit, but uh, raise hooligans, which costs the state a lot of money. It's for the son. Four legs good, two legs bad. When you've done that, we're having this celeb party. Come young and trendy. Bring somebody good looking. When you lot got in, things were going to get better. Give us time. Give us time. We're both doing our homework. How was the pizza? You're too late. It's all gone. Yeah, so we we'll see. So, what should I say? Why don't you say something about the way the writer uses colour? Like the use of blue, which can be the colour of sadness. I don't want it to sound too clever. Well, use your own words. There's nothing wrong with something sounding like you've uh, thought about it, you know. OK. Time for bed. Night. Night. I'm sorry I'm late, sir. There was nobody to work the x-ray machine. Do you want to come to a glamorous party? Wear a sexy dress. Yes, please. When is it? 10th of December. I can't. It's parents' evening at Nell's school. I really need to be there. What's your homework? Oh, I've got to write this article about cutting single parents' benefit. Um... Maybe I could use you. You're a single working mother and you're juggling work and kids, and, but you're also someone whose life's been improved by going out to work. My kids are older. I'm not sure I'd want to go out to work if they were younger. What about if it's part-time work? So who would look after my kids? You would have affordable, high-quality childcare. 
And who pays for that? Parent and the state. Why doesn't the state just pay the parent to stay at home with the child? Because that's a dependency culture. And if you pay single parents more, then you're condoning that kind of lifestyle. What? What lifestyle? Well, um, single parent lifestyle. I'm a single parent. I know, but you're different. You're, di you're mother and father to these kids. Actually, I don't think you should be cutting their benefit. Well, that, how are you going to get people back to work? Sometimes they need that nudge. Do you know how much a pint of milk costs? Maybe you should know things like that before you start nudging people. I'd rather you didn't use my name. Morning. Morning. See this. Glad to see you're not wasting your education. Mm. Quite clever. What does Blair think? Didn't read it. The kid didn't even know it's in his name. Doesn't have time. Alistair read it. So, you're going to be sipping champagne while single mothers are having their benefits cut, are you? This is Gordon's agenda. Talking about means testing, that he's calling it working families tax credit. We can work behind the scenes on this, Bill. With a majority of 179. They can't expect us just to vote like sheep. Yeah, the concern here is presentation, not how MPs are going to vote. Glad to hear democracy's in such safe hands. Ten past eight. The vote on loan payer benefit in the Commons tonight is about people. Social Security Secretary Harriet Harman, who is here with us in the studio, argues that the government's welfare to work plans can be helped by cutting this benefit for some people. Convinced that a cut would not have a damaging effect on some parents who are struggling to bring up children. Jill Etienne has two children aged five and eight. She 55 on this. When her husband left six Oswald's years ago. Oswald's gone. Can you Oswald's explain gone. to us? I had a two year old after, um, and it was extremely difficult. Um, we were in great trauma. My son had lost his father and he's never seen him since. Um, it was a time when he really needed his mother. Um, I was not in any fit state to go out to work then and I just really feel for single parents that are going to be in a similar situation next year. And there's just all the responsibility and all the burden is on the mother. Right. And now we're being penalised. coming to your right. school tonight. Why? Parents' evening. Do I have to be there? No. Right. Come on, leave that. Or because we're going to be late. No, we're bringing them in because we are concerned about the low standard of living and the life on benefits and the, the life of, of poverty that many children lead in, in families headed by a lone parent. They are amongst the poorest families in Britain. But the reason why is because they're less likely to be working. And what we're determined to do is ensure Answer the question. opportunities to work. So, so uh, uh, I'm not sure that you answered that question, whether you're doing it because you want to or you have to, but let me just ask you when you changed your mind about all this because you were quite clear very clear indeed before the election that the way to get lone mothers out of poverty uh, was not to do precisely what you're proposing today but john i haven't changed my two minutes mind. you said the way to get lone mothers out of poverty and cut spending on benefits for them is not by cutting the amount on which they have to live year by year and plunging them further into poverty. Hansard, no. 28th of November, 1996. But if you, if you read the next part of the sentence, I say, it's by helping them to work. And year in, year out... But she already said, said that it did not help them to work to cut their benefits. No, but I said that what we need to do is not give load mothers five you pounds over and above yeah. what other families get for their children and leave them for a life on benefits. Odd that Gillettian is so unimpressed by that, isn't it? I mean, there she is, a lone mother, educated, intelligent, clearly wants to do the best by her children, the best she 
she can do by her children because they're young is staying and bringing them up, the family, what Tony Blair says he believes in. We're not forcing any lone mothers to go out to work. No, but they'll we're be just, worse off, we're won't just, they? No, we're Jesus. recognising that there is always a choice. that question isn't no, it's John. yes, they will be worse off. If you yes. cut something, you make somebody worse John. off. John. That is a fact. There is always a choice in government resources. Well, let me ask you the question again, then. Are you doing it because you want to, or you have to? Now, you said in that answer that you had to do it. What I said was All right, the Tory that approach is wrong. OK. It's left one million lone mothers bringing well, up two adopted. million... No, we have not adopted, adopted the Tory the approach. Cuts. No, what we've done is offered lone mothers opportunities that they have never had before. And this I is have Alice in Wonderland stuff, no, isn't it? No, I'll tell you what it springs from, John. OK, that's it. it Paper's next. Understanding of what I just thought it might be worth saving. paying on Good. It's hard to bring we'll the news will drop to it's easier if you can do part-time work and actually have a better standard of living. Very common. Morning. I'm late, so let's get this over with. Thank you. Here the interview. I thought she did a pretty good job, defending the indefensible. It was a disaster. We need to put some distance between ourselves and Harriet. Right. But her work's gone right down. I don't understand. Well, her work at the beginning of the year was No, I understand very... what you're saying. I just don't understand. Her motivation to be very good, to be excellent, it's gone. Arriving for the first of Tony Blair's summer receptions, comedians and actors, the cream of the British entertainment industry. Anyone who was anyone, including Eddie Izzard, turned up fashionably late for the party. Paul, you know Alex from the mail? Oh, yeah. Did we hear poor Harriet this morning? She could hardly get a word out. Alistair Campbell's making a formal complaint. Humphreys is completely out of control. Is that Noel Gallagher? I don't know. I thought he was OK. She didn't sound like her heart was in it. Yeah. People here weren't very impressed. How do you mean? Oh. I doubt she'll survive the reshuffle. I'm not really a team player. Are you happy at school? Yeah. So what's going on with Nell? What do you mean? I don't know, Roy. You tell me. You'd kill me if I said anything. I need to know. There's these girls. Giving her a hard time. What? Bullying? How long? She doesn't really talk about it much. That's why she didn't want to wear that T-shirt when we went to Down the Street. She thought they'd see her waving the Union Jack and there'd be trouble. It's not your fault, Mum. think this would be your scene? Came to find you. What did you think of the house? Well, I could hardly get out of the car for listening to your programme. It was, um, like hearing a shark attack a poodle. Yeah, I thought it went well. 
You and I have been here before. I know. Listen, Gordon wants to talk to you. Is he here? You are joking. Gordon would be seen dead here. He wants to offer you a job. Got a job. This is an important position. Communications. In the Treasury? No, it's a party position, but we wanted to go to our candidate. Someone with integrity, not some hack put up by number 10. Come and help us make things happen. Be at the centre. What's the party communicating with this little bash? Giving champagne to celebrities the same time as you're cutting benefits to single mothers? Well, exactly. Tony loves the lobbies. He wanted to be a rock star until he stumbled into politics. We need your expertise. What did you think of the house? I liked it. At least take a phone call. The police are there more than the teachers. It's a hellhole. They've given me a choice of three schools, but there's only one decent one, and everybody wants to send their kids there, so you've got to live practically in the playground to stand a chance. You could move. I can't afford it. You wouldn't believe the price of houses a few streets from here. Can't you go to the same school as Roy? It's a boys' school. All oh, right. <laughs> Stupid. There's a Church of England school. You could cope with that, pop in the church every now and then. You have to go in every week. They give you this book, which they stamp, and you have to get so many stamps before you can before they even look at you. Too late discovering God. Never think of these things in that moment of passion, do you? What moment of passion was that? I don't know what to do. Have you talked to Paul? Why would I talk to Paul? Well, he gets on well with the kids. And he can't want to live in that student house forever. You could get a place together. Problem solved. He's a man. He's never going to make a decision. You've got to protect yourself, girl. I am. Are you going to rebel at every hard choice? This cut is 40 smokes. What do you think? After 18 years of the Tories, I want to vote against this government. This is a Tory cut. We're a Labour government with a huge majority. I warned you. Come on, threaten me. I'm not ambitious. I just want to serve my constituents, that's all. that we are seen as weak. The people who elected me would not expect me to sit on my hands just to meet an election target and force people into low-paid jobs. <laughs> you go ahead if you want to vote with the Tories. wanted to be part of putting our program into effect. Fancy a job in the cabinet office? No kidding. I want you in there keeping an eye on this freedom of information white paper. Make sure Clark doesn't go off the rails. That's fantastic. Yeah. I think it's a really important piece of legislation. Well, that's why it's in the manifesto. Copy everything to me.
Plexi. Cool. What are you doing here? Starting on freedom of information. You know where their office is, do you? Sure. I'm on the team, too. Really? Very good. No, the numbers on these doors don't make any sense at all. <laughs> yeah, it's Peter Kafka. Looks like we've done some damage. Government sources say Harmon isn't a team player and won't survive the reshuffle. Today. Mr. Clark, if you're ending the ministerial veto, aren't you worried that you'll be compromising civil servants? Not at all. This is a radical measure that will herald a new era of open government and give citizens legal right to information for the first time. And it will cause civil servants to think carefully about the information they give to a minister that can only be a good thing. Well, aren't you worried that it will lead to secret meetings between the ministers and their advisers? This bill will take the secrecy out of government. I like that. This bill will take the secrecy out of government. You know, I was given a sign of these two people I knew from university who got married. She called me up, asked me to meet her one day out of the blue in a tapas bar in Clapham and told me she was having an affair. The very next day I was offered a job on the Freedom Team. Right. Well, I was carrying this information and if I truly believed in the spirit of the bill. You had to tell her husband? I felt he had a right to know. We all have a right to know. You thought any more about the job? Gordon called me from some airport. You know what you're asking me to give up? Trust us. We'll be part of a modernising government. We're changing this country. New deal. No more waiting lists. Smaller classroom sizes, better schools. Freedom of information bill. I know how important your work is to you. But can you honestly imagine us living here together always on opposite sides? It just seems so unnecessary when you could be a powerful voice in the government. I thought, I'd, I thought I'd got the wrong number. That was Tim being an idiot. Hey, where are you? I'm on my way home now. OK, well, I've left you something in my room. OK. Well, I'll, t I'll, um, I'll check it out. Sorry I missed you. I'm having a party. We've got a log fire. <laughs> How's Father Christmas going to get down the chimney, then? Hmm? Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas to you, too. Girls have it done now, don't they? I just would have liked you to ask first. You would have said no. I understand more than you think. Well, Daryl likes it. Don't you, Daryl?
you should take these decorations down. Bad luck after 12 night. Not for me. Have you seen this? What? It's because she voted against the government. What's happened? They're saying that Sean's a benefit cheat and had an illegitimate child while she was at school and gave it away. Is it true? Does it matter? Well, it compromises her opposition to the single parent cut. It was years ago. It's none of their business. Where are they getting this information? Well, an MP with an illegitimate child is bound to come out eventually. It won't be nothing to do with where she voted. I saw the witch threatening her. Somebody in the party leaked that information. Okay. What do you think? She was in trouble. No one there to help. So she lied about a couple of hundred quid. Jesus Christ, let's hang her out to dry. What's she gonna do? She's gonna see it through. And good for her. I can't believe the party sent some grubby man in a raincoat to sniff out this kind of dirt. Delivery boy. I might ask you the same question. Select committee business. Really? Want to have a look? Might ever get another chance. Not bad being Lord Chancellor, is it? Valentine's cards. Lawyers always want a signature. I sign my cards. I know. How else would you know they're from me? Oh, so insecure. You get many this year? I didn't see any arrive in the post this morning. Oh, God, there was a whole sack of them came to the Commons. Have you booked some rest swish for you and Lindsay? No, I'm cooking. She's gay. She's working. What on Valentine's night? People still get sick. What about you? This is a famous wallpaper, you know? Pugin. 300 pounds a roll. This whole apartment is going to cost 163,000 pounds of taxpayers' money. Richard, leave a message. 
message. Something to eat. I cooked a fish pie. What happened to the pizza? I had pizza twice this week. So now I'm not feeding my kids properly. I didn't say that. I cooked the pie for you. You know, we're employing agency nurses who don't give a shit and paying them £40 an hour. Does that make sense to you? <sighs> No, I don't want you to go. I've got a heavy day tomorrow. You'll take this argument away with you. I'm sorry. I shouldn't bring my work home with me. I was married to a man who never raised a finger. And here you are cooking my kids fish pie. And... I'm trying. But I find it difficult to accept help. It's future. Incredibly precious. Seemed appropriate. Sean, what are you doing under there? Did you sleep here? Oh, the whips kept me. I didn't finish till half past four. I didn't seem worth going home. Bastards. Do you fancy escaping from this place and finding some breakfast? How many of your constituents say they've been snatched by aliens? Oh, God, loads. Oh, it's not just me, then. I'm going to vote against the government if they try to cut invalidity benefit. They've got a surprise coming if they think they've silenced me. Maggie Dawn. Come on, please. Ducky, how are you? Last time I saw you, you were trying to chop the headmaster out of his own skull. And you were right when you rather bugger. What happened, Ducky? It's a long story. Sorry, madam. Where are you living? I'm back in Roker, too. Well, come and see me, OK? Prime Minister met MPs to discuss invalidity benefit. It was a bullish meeting. The numbers claiming invalidity benefit have gone up from 100,000 to 1.5 million. The PM reminded MPs we had promised the electorate we wouldn't shy away from making tough choices. He told them to stop moaning, go back to their constituencies and make the case. It's a great honour to have our local MP around for tea. <laughs> I'm very pleased to be here. And her researcher. Well, I can't help feeling sorry for Frank Drake. He has a lot more time for his golf swing now. <laughs> I, 
hope now you're in power, the country doesn't find itself being run by the unions. Sandwich. Help yourselves. Does the wolf really change its clothes? We shall see. I am encouraged you've taken on these welfare sponges. You mean the disabled? And these girls who get themselves pregnant. Expecting the state to look after them. Milk. Thank you. My job is to get your mother out canvassing for you. She's not my mother. She's my stepmother. Isn't it obvious? I thought you might have been adopted. God, I can stand this place when I was growing up. I would happily run through the streets with an axe. And now you're repaying the debt. I don't regret what I did. I bleached my hair. <laughs> Stayed out all night taking drugs. Poor Dad. That's why he's so grateful and self-destructed yet. <laughs> it gives you your spark. Tim, you don't have to be so nice to me all the time. I don't deserve it for a start. Your dad's terrific. My mum was a hero. She just sort of absorbed all the shit and came back with love. What happened to her? She died. I'm not sure she would have approved of my coming back here. I think she hated this place too. And she would never have approved of cutting welfare benefits for people having a difficult time. She thought you had to support people. She was pleased I was a rebel. And now here I am with a garden gate. Your mother would be so proud of you. We're all terribly proud of you. Sorry. <sighs> Sorry. I'll see you tomorrow. Give a briefing on the invalidity benefit cut. Yes. What do you say? Why? What's wrong? The papers are quoting Blair as telling MPs to stand up and be counted. Well, that was the substance of his meeting with the MPs. This probably wasn't made clear to you, but this is an economic matter. So any briefing has to be cleared with us first. No, it wasn't made clear to me. I thought I was employed by the party. That's the way it has to work. So anything I say has to be approved by you? No, not just by me. Number 10 has to see it as well. It's important that we're all seen to be speaking with one voice. What? Come and be at the centre, you said. You are at the centre. It's funny, I can't hear my voice. Same voice that used to give this government quite a hard time. Yeah, I, I do realise that, Barry, but we do have to stick to set the procedure. I was sent out to the Gulf. We thought we were going to kick Saddam's ass. 
I seem to remember it was your answer to everything. Send in the army. We were given all these vaccines, whooping cough, anthrax. I asked what was in them and was told I didn't need to know. Then I started having these fits. Eventually they shipped me back to the UK and within three months I was out of the army. As you can see, things haven't exactly got better. I loved the army, but they've really shit on me now. It's all in there. There's a Gulf Veterans Information Unit at the MOD. They've got this thing called a mapper system. All the information's on microfiche in brown boxes, which they're going to destroy early next century. What sort of information? Um, I don't know. Well, basically, we need to find out exactly what they injected him with. Now, I put down a question, but it was blocked. The MOD is saying it's an official secret. I'll go and see them. Would you? Sure. He was this strapping great lad. I can't believe someone stuck a needle in his arm and now he's in a wheelchair. Thank you for taking the thank you for taking the time to see me. Um I was hoping you could help me with some information. Happy to. Uh Desert Storm Syndrome. Doesn't exist. Really? <sighs> what about the injections given to the soldiers? Pretty routine stuff, you know, like the flu jab. Right. But the after effects aren't anything like the flu, are they? Well, a few of these soldiers didn't take to the climate. The situation's being addressed. I know. A 70% war pension, uh, no fault compensation. Well, these soldiers are unfit for active service. Well, a lot of them are in the prime of their life. So, Desert Storm Syndrome doesn't exist? That's right. What about the unminuted meetings here at the MOD to discuss it? How can you have a meeting to discuss something that doesn't exist? May I see that? In a few months, the Freedom of Information Bill will be law, and you won't be able to withhold this sort of information, so why make it so difficult for these men and their families now? I think we've gone as far as we're able to, given the current state of legislation, don't you? You locked the office. My clothes are in there. We're finished. What are you talking about? The Prime Minister thinks we've cracked freedom of information. Well, if he thinks that, we're in real trouble. You sacked Clark. And why is Charles saying the bill may have to wait? What well, Charles is saying? No, 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 no. Before you start to reinterpret other people's words, remember I know what that means. That means you're right to lie to me. Don't lie to me, Harvey, please. Lisa Mandelson thinks the public have trouble trusting politicians. In his opinion, laws are no substitute for ministers behaving with honesty and openness. The Prime Minister wants Clark to do another job. You'll still be working on the bill. You'll just be based at home office. Now I'm due at a meeting. Jack Straw's done U-turns on private prisons and trial by jury. You're sending the bill to him, 
and you expect me to be reassured? Paul, I haven't got time for this. Clark lost the plot, he had to be replaced. Jack's working on data protection, it makes sense to put the two together. Now, you know all this. You were supposed to be keeping an eye on it, remember? We are still committed to the principle of freedom of information, aren't we? Absolutely. my feet in Downing Street. How long have you been here? Not long, but there's more a feeling of people pulling together here. Uh -huh. Come meet Gavin. Gavin? This is Paul. Oh, hi. <laughs> Welcome to the Home Office. Thanks. Did Penny tell you Donald wants to see you? I hope you don't mind if I'm completely frank with you, Paul. I'm a little concerned that we're not going to have enough work to keep you occupied in this department. Well, uh, that's very interesting, Donald. Um, I've only just arrived and I'm absolutely amazed at how much work there is. Quite frankly, I'm just wondering how I'm going to get through it all. How's that work I asked for coming on? To be honest, we're not sure it's really worth the time. It is worth the time, Gavin. Otherwise, I wouldn't have asked you to do it. I just don't see it happening. It is government policy. It's a manifesto pledge. And I've asked you to carry out some work. And I expect you, as a junior member of this department, to follow up my request. Problem? No. No problem. You okay? Hi. What is it? Nothing. Nell. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Paul! I really need to talk to you. Nell's being bullied at school. Right. So we need to do something. I have to get her out of the school she's in. Okay. How can I help? I need to say you and I are living together. Okay. You don't really have to do it. No, right, no. I just need your address. I've checked. It would put me in the catchment area. Is it that easy? I don't know, Paul, but I'm desperate. Is this what you want from your life? It's been a pretty bloody day, actually. You and me. Is this what you want? You living across the road, popping over for homework and sex? Is that how you see it? It's what it is, Paul. You've never told me you loved me. You told me I was precious and I appreciated that. But you've never said you loved me. It's okay. You don't have to say anything. 
I want to say something. I want to. I've been meaning to say something. <clears throat> I've been wanting to say something. This is my fault. I didn't think it through. We fancied each other, Paul. You can't control that. It was more than that. Are you sure? We'll be fine. Please use the address. I want to help. You take care of yourself. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Are you coming back to join us? Um, I don't know. Maybe. What are you saying? I don't want to bullshit you, Aaron. A lot of people have left journalism for politics. It's far harder to make the journey in reverse. Right, well, I think we've all found this a very useful exercise, which will, in many ways, act as a model for consultation on future legislation. Now, this government is committed to a radical benefit system, and this will inevitably lead to an impact on the invalidity benefit. However, as a direct result of these meetings, I think that today we are in a position to announce some very good news. Richard. Thanks, Nick. <clears throat> As you know, uptake of these benefits has increased tenfold and we do need to address that budget head. But we're not unsympathetic to the points you're making, so we have decided to amend the proposal. Instead of cutting in at £50, means testing of invalidity benefit will now cut in at £55, which will mean that in two years... This is a joke! In fact, this whole consultation process is a joke. We've been coming here for weeks and it's obvious that nothing we say will make any difference. No, I'm afraid I'm going to have so to take all you've done is you've turned a group of moderate people, people who are your natural supporters, into militants. I feel completely betrayed. You're cutting benefits to the disabled. It's the last thing I thought a Labour government would ever do. Shame on you. Shame on you. Disability cuts if you wanted to
Honey. Tell me if I'm paranoid. But are there meetings going on here that I know nothing about? Actually, I was just coming to find you. I've got the draft of the new Freedom of Information Bill. What do you mean? I'm still working on it. It isn't finished. Yes, it is. I brought you the new Freedom Bill. Makes interesting reading. to access information is going to make it harder. In the white paper, the public had access to all government information unless it could be shown to cause substantial harm. They've changed the prejudice. So, I mean, for Christ's sake, the amount of money the department spends on chocolate biscuits could cause a minister embarrassment and therefore be deemed prejudicial. This is all about not disclosing information. Protecting ministers. Paul, oh. if I use this, they'll know there's been a leak. Don't care. Use it. with the crockery cupboards at the Home Office. I know that every department has a cupboard. Well, you have four. One for each minister. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I believe there is also a book, the uh, coffee reservations book. Meetings are entered into this book if tea or coffee is required. I'm not really familiar with either the crockery or the book. Are you sure about that? These are photocopies of some pages from the coffee reservations book. You will see, Mr. Taylor, that I have marked several pages where you have signed the book. Now, were you present at these meetings? Or were you just the coffee boy? No, I was present. How many such meetings took place? I've marked them. Count them. Seven. And what was discussed at these meetings? I really have no idea. <laughs> OK. Can you tell us where team members who came over with the Freedom of Information legislation from the Cabinet Office present at these meetings? I'm sorry, I... These are pages from the diaries of members who came over from the Cabinet Office. From the diary entries, it is clear that they were not present at these meetings. Is it not the case that at those meetings from which Cabinet Office personnel were excluded, you systematically eviscerated the freedom of information legislation as is clear from the draft bill we have before us. I'm afraid you'd have to take that up with more senior colleagues. But I know what they'll tell you. 
It's department policy not to comment on leaks. How did it go? He looked like I'd stuck him on a spit roast. Are you done? Do you know why I've asked to see you? Do I have a detention? They want you to rejoin the mainstream of the party. As a senior member of parliament, I'm asking you to take your name off the motion opposing the benefit cut. No. Well, I'd like you to reconsider that answer. Why are you so threatened by any opposition? What destroyed this party in the past was weak discipline. We spent more time fighting ourselves than the opposition. It's not going to happen again. Hmm. We have a file on you. You must be desperate. Attempting to destroy a chemical plant. Trying to bring to the public's attention how it was polluting an estuary. I have given 15 years of my life to this party. I will not be bullied like this. something I wanted to tell you. I'm pregnant. <laughs> hey, Paul. Can you guess? Hey, Penny. <laughs> Are you all right? Okay. See you a bit. See you upstairs. And I understand that congratulations are in order. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. We're still trying to decide if we can get to New England for the summer. Uh -huh. Gordon rents a house there. You're going on holiday with Gordon? You put him in sandals and a pair of shorts, it can be fun. <laughs> Alright guys. Hey! Okay. <clears throat> Are you sure you and Maggie know what you're doing? What do you mean? Oh, she signed this disability motion and now it's like committee leak. Not a good idea to get on the wrong side of the whips. She's had her wrist slapped. She votes against the government. It'll be the end of her career. The point is to change things from the inside. Is that what you're doing? The point is, if you try and work within the system, the civil service frustrate you at every turn. Look what they did to freedom of information. Tore our bit apart. Your bill was a joke, Paul. I don't want to have to answer to the milkman for why I arrived at an economic decision and gave Gordon a piece of advice. You know, this innocent act might work with Maggie, but it doesn't work with me. Excuse me. What do you mean? What are you talking about? You being put in there as Harvey's eyes. You must have known. Known what? There was a meeting. Harvey was there when the decision was made to send the bill to the Home Office to be killed. He was dead from day one. I don't believe you. I was there, Paul. Don't you not ever have a night of politics? Come on. Come on. What's going on? Who's it for? I don't know where it's for all of you. Really? I found the negative the other day.
Jehovah's Witness. Did you go to a meeting where you discussed killing the Bill? The Bill? For those Chianti drinking wankers sitting on their yoga mats in Hampstead. Hello, Poppy. I'll be upstairs in a minute. I put you in there to stop this nonsense. You were supposed to go native on us. It was an election pledge. It's not going to win us the next election. Are you telling me that the truth would work against us? You're starting to sound like an editorial in The Guardian. Haven't I taught you anything? Haven't you taught me anything? Well, that's a good question, Harvey. What have you taught me? I think the best thing for you, Paul, is that I forget you ever came round here. to serve the people of Roca, and I have a right to be heard. Why don't you ask how these cuts are going down in my constituency? <laughs> you stupid cow. You got elected because you had new Labour next to your name. You vote against us. You're finished. in the corridor by one of the whips. Which one? I will not be intimidated in this house because I make a stand on a point of principle. I want him disciplined now or I shall go to the press. Sit down, Maggie. Sit down. We're very pleased with you. You feel passionately about certain issues and we respect that. We want to use that passion. So it really comes down to a very simple choice. Take your name off the motion and vote with the government on disability and you will be a junior minister in the Department of Transport after the next election. Or vote against us and your career is over. When a new hospital is awarded, it will not go to Roka. When a bypass needs Secretary of State approval, it will not be given in Roka. When Nissan want government grants to build a new factory, they will not be forthcoming for a factory in your constituency. It will make you unelectable. It's, it's really up to you. Where have you been? 
I was worried about you. I went to see Harvey. You okay? Yeah, fine. I'm leaving, mate. What do you mean? I quit my job this morning. Finished. Don't do this over freedom of information. It's not worth it. No one out there cares anyway. It's nothing to do with freedom of information. You remember what it felt like that day? Of course I do. What do you remember? I almost drowned, that's what I remember. I was soaked. I was terrified. Covered in toxic waste. <laughs> but I have never been happier or clearer about anything in my life. Because what we were doing was right. Through all the shit I've been doing for Harvey, I convinced myself it was worth it to get rid of the Tories. And for that, I lied. And I bucked and I fucked over my friends. <laughs> because once we're in power, then we'd show them. You won't show them. Show them what? <laughs> we're cutting benefits and we're building private prisons. We're making kids pay for an education we have for free. You have to make difficult decisions when you get into government. We have a majority of 179, Maggie. We can do. We should get away. We need to sort our lives out. Think about what we're going to do. Maggie. Maggie. This isn't fair, Paul. If you want to quit, then quit. The people of Roker gave me this job. I am not going to walk away. Not while I can still make a difference. I can't leave now. I've got too much invested, Paul. I've been a member of this party since I was 16. I have a lot invested, too. Well, I heard. Parliamentary Secretary and the Lord Chancellor's Department. I have Social Security. They'll see. Angela Hillary Corder Jones, the Liberal Democratic Party, 7,712. <laughs> Stephen Frank Potter, the Green Party, 833. And I therefore declare that Margaret Jane Dunn has been duly elected to serve as Member of Parliament for the Roca constituency. I've been a member of this party since I was 16 years old, through the good and the bad times. I just hope I can repay your faith in me. Thank you.
I remember driving into work. It was a beautiful day. Blue sky, and the streets were still full of people. It was incredible. The whole country seemed to be smiling. It was as if an occupying army had been defeated. Strangers hugging each other. Anything seemed possible. It was just an extraordinary day. drama coming to BBC One. Look out for George Eliot's masterpiece, Daniel Deronda. More details in a wee sec.